everybody. Good morning. How are you? I hope whoever you are watching this video that you're having a wonderful day and you have a very productive day after you get through watching this video. And I would like to start off this React video with a warning. And that's something I don't do. I don't give warnings for my videos, but I'm giving it for this one because those of you that come to my channel, you know that I do the calm reacts. That's what I'm known for, doing the more chill reacts. But this react is not going to be chill. There's going to be some naughty language. So if you're somebody watching my videos and maybe naughty language, curse words put you off, you don't like it, apologies in advance. But I'm going to use some naughty language. I'm going to say some curse words because I'm pissed off. I'm not afraid to say it. I am pissed off at Chantal. So why am I mad at her? Well, I'm mad at her because of her community post. And her community post has to do with her time in Kuwait and her trying to put off this vibe that since she's been there, she's lost a tremendous amount of weight. So she's sending out this message of you can be in Kuwait and binge eat and eat like a fool and lose weight. And that is absolutely incorrect. And I'm especially pissed off because I'm somebody that I was once a binge eater and it took me six years to get around that, to get in recovery. And here's this person, Chantal, she's acting like she's in recovery when clearly she's not in recovery. So yeah, I'm going to go all the way off about that. Hence why I gave the warning because I'm just not going to hold back today. So again, if you don't like curse words, swear words, not something you're into, something that might put you off, again, apologies. But today I'm going tr completely unfiltered. So let me just go ahead and share the screen so you guys can see and hear what I see and hear. Okay, so let's start with that mentioned community post. So here is the community post she posted two hours ago saying weight loss update video coming in in the next few days. Y'all take a look at those pictures. Y'all notice anything about those pictures? If you're not noticing what I'm noticing, let me point it out for you. So first, let's take a look at these eyes. Her pupils are awfully huge, aren't they? And do you see this, this line going around her face? It's not even a straight line. It doesn't even look like a natural face profile. It looks like it's been edited, heavily edited. So even if I didn't see that line in her face, Okay, I, I am into art. I am definitely into art. Does this look natural to you? Look, she's got a very, very wide face, wide cheekbones, and then it narrows down to a pointy chin. No, that's, that's not Mother Nature at work. Mother Nature is not going to give you a pointy chin and a really round face. And then we've got this picture. Again, the pointy chin that doesn't really exist except only with her filters. Again, wide forehead, wide cheekbones, her face is wide from here to here, and then from here down, almost in a straight line where her mouth starts, you got that, that triangle effect. That's the filters. So she's got this close-up shot, and then she's got this far away shot. This, this is editing, this is about camera angles, and this is about filters. That makes me angry that she's in Kuwait and she's trying to put off this picture that you can be somewhere and overeat and have a raging out of control ED. But eat whatever you want and, you know, like on a dime, you're completely cured. Let me tell you something. If you're an addict to anything, whatever it is, you're always an addict. It's just that either you're in recovery or you're not, but you're always going to be an addict. But you're either on one side of the fence or the other. And Chantal, I've been watching you for years. You are definitely not in recovery. Something I want to show you all before we get into all the other stuff. Okay. So, like, this is just something I pulled up off of the Internet. Like, if you're eating a meal, what are the correct portions? So when you're pulling stuff on your plate, this is what you should do. Half your plate is vegetables or salad. That's half the plate. 
quarter of a plate for high pro quality protein from meat, poultry, fish, eggs, dairy, tofu, beans, and pulses. Then another quarter of your plate for complex carbs such as whole grains and starchy vegetables. And then if you want fats, half a teaspoon of high fat foods including, including cheese, oils, and butter. Something of note that People should know if they don't already know, Chantal has no gallbladder, so she really should not be eating cheese. Not good for her. Because of her not having a gallbladder, she should be avoiding cheese anyway, and yet cheese is one of her favorite things. And that's something she's been eating a lot of since she's been in Kuwait. You know, eating the, the, the cheese-filled olives, eating the block cheese. I mean, she's going nuts with the cheese and the chocolate. So now that you guys have seen what the correct portions are, can I show you all something? Look here. Look here. Hold on a second. I went off to the other screen for some reason. This is what they ate in the restaurant. Look at that. Y'all just take a look. Three plates of rice. Three. Three. There's some meat there. But there's so much rice. And then there's the pita bread and french fries and a soup bowl made out completely out of a loaf of bread. Does that look like a meal that someone like Chantal should have if they're trying to lose weight? No. I mean, just in this one plate alone, there's got to be at least six or seven servings of rice. Never mind the other two here, like this plate of rice, that one, this one, plus the french fries over here. The, the bowl with the soup over here, the bread over here. I mean, just there's carbs all day on this on this table. Carbs. Carbs. Carbs everywhere. Okay, is that the same picture? Sorry. Uh, what else we got? There's a close-up of the, uh, the, the dish. There's some meat there, but the majority of it is, is rice, something that Chantal does not need. Oh, and this is also a shot that I got from her newest live. She's back to drinking the soda. In fact, I don't think she ever stopped. Look at the size of that bottle. That's practically a two liter bottle. And you're trying to lose weight, Chantal. You're over there losing weight, drinking soda like that. Where's the one? There it is. That's the picture I wanted to pull up. 15 candy bars, y'all. 15. That's while she was in Kuwait. 15 freaking candy bars. You know, snacking on one candy bar, that's that's just you having the munchies. But 15 candy bars is a binge. You're binging, Chantal. You're over there with Sala, and he's saying he wants you to lose 200 pounds. Sala, how is she going to lose 200 pounds if she's eating 15 candy bars, bro? And tons of cheese. Tons. And she's back to eating while she's streaming. Since he's there, she's sitting there snacking on the olives. Like she can't have her potato chips and all that like she normally does. But she's eating while she's streaming. She stopped for a minute, but then she's back to doing this. 15 freaking candy bars. Insane. Absolutely insane. What else we got here? I'm just making sure I got everything. Oh, yeah. This is a shot of the, the, the bowl for the soup. There's probably a healthy soup in there, but look, it's surrounded by bread. That's the one thing Chantal does not need. Doesn't need it all. So you're supposed to have a healthy portion of just rice. Just, just the rice, Chantal, for dinner. And there were three plates of rice and french fries and a bowl made out of bread. And pita bread. Only a lumberjack needs that much. Only a lumberjack needs that much. Let me just go back. Okay. So. So she's over here. Where's, where's the community post? I got to find it again. Oh, there it is. So, yeah. She's making this community post using the filters. Filming herself close up. And then far away, making it seem like she's lost weight. I went back to her channel to see how long she's been in Kuwait. She's been in Kuwait for about two weeks. 
two weeks is not a long time. It's not three months. And if she's over there going to town on the carbs and the cheese and the candy bars, how is she losing weight? She's not. I'm angry because she's putting out this lie to people. She's not just lying about herself, but there's also those that maybe are trying to lose weight or those who might have an ED. They might get the wrong idea that you can eat whatever you want and lose weight. You can't do that. You just can't do that. You can't go to town on food and say, oh, I'm cured now. It's not how it works. You got to put the time and the work in to get in recovery of whatever addiction you have. Chantal has not put the time and the work in. Hey, Chantal, remember that little live stream you did before you left to go to Kuwait where you were in the dark eating cake? You had the lights out and you were eating cake. Do you remember that? I remember that. But you're in recovery, right? You also said that you don't like sweets. Didn't you remember? I remember you saying that. Oh, I don't like sweets. And there's something I want to show everybody before we get into that. I'm, I'm all over the place with my thoughts today, so excuse me. I'm just mad. This is from What's Happening. I'm going to leave a link for this video in the description, and I do encourage everyone to go check out what's happening in their channel. So she's around Sala, and for those who don't have an ED, there's a thing called sneak eating where you're keeping your eating a secret or you're doing it behind the backs of everyone else. Chantal was doing it when she was with Natter. She would sit there and eat Natter's food. And then as soon as he was away from her, she would go drive to a Starbucks or a Burger King and pick up the food she really wanted and go to town. Well, guess what? She's back to doing it around Sala. Watch. <laughs> anyway. Mm. Look. So she's sitting there. If, if he's not looking, she's sticking something in her mouth. You know, Chantal is, she's like a little kid who gets off on doing things she's not supposed to do. I mean, she, she really loves it. She loves to do things that she's not supposed to do. She gets a kick out of it with getting away with something. Chantal, the overeating, the binge eating, the only person you're hurting is you. But you're like a little kid that way in your head. Oh, I've, I got away with something. I'm so bad. I'm so naughty. No, you're stupid. That's what you are. You're stupid. Yeah. So she can't really eat potato chips and stuff in front of Sala. So she's making do with the olives. But look at that face. That's the face of somebody who's doing something they know they shouldn't be doing. And they're trying not to get caught. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh my god, I'm so scattered brain right now. I have too many things to talk about. Talk about talk about <laughs> Okay, I start eating olives today. I want to pepper. <laughs> like she she can't go through a live stream and just do the live stream. There has to be food involved. And you know what? I had a thought when I was taking a shower a few minutes ago. You know, that thing that Chantal doesn't like to do. I was just, you know, in the shower thinking. And I just, I had a thought hit me. So I'm going to share it with you guys. Chantal, she's an addict when it suits her. She's an addict when it suits her purpose. When there's something to be gained from being an addict. In her case, it's, it's money and attention. She's got a severe problem with food. She's got a severe problem with party favors. She's got a severe problem with attention, but rather than seek help and therapy for those things, she uses those things to get other things that she wants. So she'll do the drugs on camera because you know she wants to connect with other people in her audience that do drugs. She will eat on camera not just to satiate her hunger, which is never ending, but also to connect with the feeders in her audience and have them send her money. 
And then when she wants to get sympathy from people, oh, like, it's so hard, you guys, I don't understand. And, and, and trying to use that language of I'm in recovery. You ain't in recovery for shit, Chantal. Because being in recovery means you're putting in the work to be on the other side of your addiction. You're not on the other side of any of your addictions. None of them. You're in Kuwait. You're around a good looking guy. And you would think that would be motivation enough for you to stay away from the food the way you're going after it. But no, you're going full throttle with it. Not completely. You're like 75% of the way there. But when you come back to Canada, you're going to binge. And that's not me being a negative Nancy and wishing that upon you. I don't wish that upon anyone. Anyone who's ever struggled with BED, I don't wish that upon anyone. It's horrible. It's horrible. I don't wish any addiction upon anyone. But if somebody like myself that I've been on that side of the fence with that addiction, looking at you, a person that you're still on the other side, I don't see it in you that you want to quit. I don't see it in you that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and letting your ED go out of control. I see you indulging in it. And I guarantee you that when you get off that plane in Canada, probably before you even leave the airport, you're going to stop at a Starbucks and a Burger King and a McDonald's and you're going to go wild because you're in Kuwait and you're not even trying to put the brakes on in Kuwait. You're not trying. And I'm going to throw this in there too. I think, and this is my opinion, I think as far as you and Sala, that you fat fished yourself all the way to Kuwait. That you sent him edited pictures. And if you guys talked on video, you did it through your phone where you can use your filters. I mean, if you're not going to show what you really look like to people on the internet that you don't even have to meet, you're certainly not going to show your real self to somebody you actually do have to meet. I think you fat fished him. I think you sent him the edited pictures, you talked to him through video chat, maybe you guys set up some sort of a business deal, and you had that on lock before you got that on the, on the plane to go see him, and then when you finally showed up at the airport, he got the shock of his life. That's what I think. Those are my feelings and opinions. Anybody out there can have their own, but you have confessed in the past that you fat fished people. That you have been a catfish. You, the woman that claims that several men are running after her, you have, have confessed to catfishing and fatfishing people. So why wouldn't you do it to somebody else? To somebody that you want to play house with and play act as being your husband. You fatfished him, you catfished him. You set up a business deal so that when you got to Kuwait, he couldn't back away or back down for being around you. Those are my feelings. But going back to my original point, I do not like how you're getting on YouTube and you're telling this great big lie of I'm in Kuwait and we see you binging. We see you overeating. And you're putting out this false message of I've lost so much weight. No, you haven't. You've been there for two weeks and you say that you've been walking for hours, but there's no proof of that. Just doing a 10 minute video, showing yourself walking around, that's not strenuous exercise. And you haven't curtailed your portion, Chantal. I mean, we look, look, you're losing weight, huh? You're lo really, really? Th that doesn't look like the meal of somebody who's trying to lose weight. That looks like a meal of somebody who's a carb addict and they love their carbs and they're loading up on carbs. Where's the other picture? Oh, and this too, does this look like somebody who's trying to be healthy? This haul that you did was at a grocery store. The grocery store uh, or market was filled with healthy food. Why do I see more unhealthy food on the, the conveyor belt than healthy food. All these Snickers bars and candy bars, 
that could have been apples and oranges and bananas and whatnot. But we see this. And can I say this as a former binge eater? When you have BED, the worst thing you can do is put temptation food too close to you. To put the temptation right there within reach. If, it, if you can reach out and touch it or you can walk across the room and go get it, it's too close. If you are aware that you have a problem with food, the best thing to do is to keep the temptation foods out of the house. So that if you get tempted by them, they're not within a reach where you can go get them right away. And here's Chantal that's buying a whole bunch of temptation foods and taking them home. So no, I don't think she's in recovery. I don't think she's close to being in recovery between the meals she ate at the restaurant and all these freaking candy bars. She's not in recovery and watching her on live stream where she's sitting there. She's back to eating while she's streaming. You know, it's just, you're nowhere close to recovery, Chantal. You're not. And I'm saying that as a person that I've dealt with binge eating, it was so incredibly hard because having a food problem, it's, it's different than a lot of other addictions because it's something you just can't quit. You can't quit eating. So if you can't quit what you're addicted to, how do you get on the other side of it? And the answer is you have to repair your relationship with food. You have to look at it the right way. You have to treat it the right way. You cannot use food as a substitute for love or comfort. You cannot use it to calm yourself down when you are in a negative state of mind or emotion. You have to treat it the way it's meant to be treated. And rewiring yourself to where you're not reaching for food at bad moments, it takes a while. You're going to have moments where you stumble and, and you just let go. We all go through it. For those of us that are on, you know, that have that addiction, we'll have moments where we just lose control. But the important part is to get back on the horse and keep riding. Don't beat yourself up. Don't stay in, stuck in the mud too long. Just keep on. And eventually you will be in recovery. It took me six years to be in recovery. And I absolutely fucking hate how you're getting on YouTube, eating this way, eating this crap, and saying, oh, I've lost weight. Bullshit. Bullshit. You haven't lost weight. And you know what? If you have lost, let's just say five pounds. If you've lost five pounds. Are you going to be able to keep it off when you get back to Canada with all the temptations near you? How can you truly say the term recovery when the only thing keeping you away from all of the junk food and the binges is solid? And he's not even doing it that well because we, we can still see you're binging on sweets and cheeses and whatever else. What's going to happen when you go back home to Canada? And you're surrounded by all that temptation. Is Sala is not there to tell you no. I know exactly what's going to happen. You're going to make excuses. And you're going to say, well, I stayed away from it while I was over there. I've, I've been clean and sober for two weeks. I deserve this. You're going to make excuses. You're going to find reasons to do it. You're going to justify it. Because that's what you do when you have an addiction. And you want to do the addiction and you're just trying to find some way to make yourself feel better doing it. If you want to continue, you will find a reason and a way to continue. What else we got here? Oh, this is from Piggy. And this, I, I got hot watching, listening to this. This is her giving advice to Amberlynn Reed for weight loss privacy reasons so okay, so let's talk about that requiring me to lose and i'm going to leave a link for piggy's video in the description for anyone who does not know about piggy yet absolutely recommend going to see piggy piggy's got great videos please wait so so people can badger me for how many like when i was on my weight loss journey when i was the first journey what weight loss journey when have you ever been on a weight loss journey i've been watching you for all the longest i've seen you play act at it I've seen you buy healthy groceries and you make do all this nutritional talk. 
but then you backslide and you buy the temptation foods and you're right back to binging. You want to know why? Because you're too busy catering to all the feeder jerks that are on your channel that give you money and buy you food and buy you clothes and send you money through PayPal. You know that's your core audience, your niche audience, and you're so busy catering to those idiots, you're not thinking about the other 85 to 90% of people on your channel that aren't feeders. started YouTube for so many years. I had reaction channels on my, uh, you know, on my case about, well, this is why you'll never lose weight. Remember that Kiana Doherty video? This is this YouTuber will never lose weight. Well, your video didn't age well, did it? Because I did lose seven pounds. Yeah, let's talk about that. Since you brought it up, let's talk about that, Chantal. Let's discuss that. That you lost 70 pounds. How did you do that? Y'all remember how she did it? Let me remind those of you that do not know how it happened. She lost 70 pounds because she was around Natter. And they were partying hard on the cocoa. And she lost 70 pounds because she was doing the cocoa. Remember that deleted live stream where she said she did $3,000 worth of cocoa? Yeah. That's because Miss Ma'am here, you know, she wanted to lose weight, but she knew that she would never be approved for weight loss surgery for a variety of reasons her health problems would make her high risk for being on the table. That's number one. Number two, she would fail the psych evaluation. Number three, if you have an eating problem, you gotta get completely over that before you get the weight loss surgery. You cannot be a binge eater and then go through a surgery where they're going to make your stomach smaller because you still got those thoughts of food. And if you have the surgery, and make it off the table. If you have those thoughts of food, you're gonna still gonna want a bitch. But by then your stomach is way too small and all you're gonna end up doing is making yourself vomit over and over and over again, or maybe making your stomach rupture. It's not gonna be pretty. So she knew that she would never get weight loss surgery. She'd never get approved. So what happened then? Y'all remember, she went to the Ozempec. She started doing the Ozempec because she heard that on Ozempec, you can lose weight. The thing is, even with Ozempec, you're not going to lose a tremendous amount of weight, which is something that Chantal needs to do for her own health. She needs to lose about, I would say, 200, 250, you know, to be somewhere in the 300 pound range or so, to be more mobile. She's about 500 right now. But with Ozempec, you might lose 15, 20 pounds, and that's if. You have a healthy diet and you exercise and you're really on top of things. You might lose a little bit of weight as a side effect. So she did this, the Ozempec, didn't like the way it made her feel. And she knew that she had those thoughts of food, that she has an obsession with food. So her way of dealing with it was doing the cocoa because cocoa is a stimulant. And just like with something like, say, coffee, you know, if you drink coffee, you're, you feel very alert and notice that when you drink coffee, you don't feel hungry. So imagine a stronger stimulant. Chantal did the cocoa. It gave her energy to stream all day. It short circuited those thoughts and that obsession with food. And she lost 70 pounds. And I know she lost weight then because when I was watching her, I noticed that we could see more of her ears and there was more of a definition of cheekbone in her cheek. So she, yeah, she did lose weight, but then what happened? She gained it all back and then some. So she's always looked for shortcuts and easy, quick fixes to her ED rather than go get therapy and talk to somebody and get to the root of the problem. You know, she wants everything right now, yesterday, the day before, but she doesn't want to do what she should do to get some guaranteed weight loss that'll happen and will actually stick. She wants to be able to lose weight and binge at the same time. You can't do both, Chantal. You cannot lose weight while being a binge eater. Sorry, no, absolutely not.
can't. Nope. And you're over there trying to give Amberlynn Reed advice, even if you had it to give. I've been watching Amber, too. She's not listening either. You know, I saw her little chart recently of what she's been doing. Two days, she had what she called intuitive eating, which is nonsense, because if you're still a binge eater, you don't know how to eat intuitively. Okay? And then the rest of the time, she was she binged. So she's not in the mindset to stop either. But you're over here acting like some sort of a guru, like you're in a position to give other people advice for losing weight. No, no. Get your own problems under control before you step out of your backyard and start telling people what they should do. And I kept it off. But sorry to be smug, <laughs> but I just don't like people who just make assumptions on people's lives. Like it's just like, you know, that people can't change. I don't like this attitude. I just can't stand it. So, um, they were on my case back then about losing weight. And then now- You know what Sean's talking? I'm going to say this for me. That's your life. And that's your body. If you want to be X amount of pounds, if you want to live your life in a certain way, that's your right to do so. Here's the problem with what you do. You're doing it publicly. You're putting everything on camera. You're getting in front of the public. And getting in front of the public. And doing drugs. And monetizing self-harm content. And I'm sorry, binge eating is self-harm content. You are hurting yourself doing that. And by doing the, the binge eating on camera, you might be triggering people that have EDs. You're affecting other people with your life by doing that. If you did all that stuff in private, nobody would complain because nobody would know. But you decided to put all this crap in front of the public. So can you complain if the reaction channels as the public, as part of the public, they're just giving their opinions as anybody else would seeing something like this? Now that, you know, whenever I would call that fat shaming, they would be like, it's concern. So now that I have somebody in my life who wants me in their life for as long as possible and me being morbidly obese, that's not gonna happen. Now that I have someone in my life who's concerned about my weight, out of love and not out of disgust, it's... Um... You know what, I'm, I'm just gonna say this. If you're a person and you have an ED, or you're around a person who has an addiction, sometimes those people around you that love you, that care for you, they hurt more than you do because of your addiction. Because they're watching it all go down and they feel helpless. They feel like their hands are tied. They can't do anything to help you. They can't fix you. You know, like they, they just feel like, like, like I care about this person. I love them, but what, what can I do to help? There's nothing I can do. It's up to the addict to make that first step and say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and I'm going to do something. Like Chantal's family, they can't do anything for her. This whole thing with her ED, it's over their head. And Sala, this whole thing with her eating problem, that's over your head. This is not just about fixing her portions or denying her food. There is something mental and emotional going on there. There is something wrapped up with food to where she's always going to food. That's something that requires intense counseling and therapy. And those are things that Chantal refuses. This is not a simple problem of taking the food away or limiting the food or locking the fridge. This is something that needs intense therapy. Her level of obsession with food is insane. It's way worse than whatever I went through. 
And what makes it worse is the fact that she's monetized her problem. So because of the money, she's really not going to let go of this thing. She's always going to gravitate to food because it makes her money. So anybody trying to fix Chantal and thinking, oh, I can, I can really fix her. I can fix her broken parts. No, you can't. Because the only person that can fix that broken person is the person who's broken. It's up to them to do the work. You can't be over somebody's shoulder and be their warden 24 seven and thinking that that's fixing them. No, restricting someone is not fixing someone. The person who is broken needs to fix themselves. Um, it's a problem. It's him fat shaming me. Do you see the, the, the weird mentality here? So no, um, he doesn't bug me on a regular basis or at all bug me to lose weight. He doesn't say you have to lose weight for the, you know, it's my mom says the same thing to me. You know, my family's been concerned about my weight in the same way Salah is. When you love somebody, you care about them and you want them around as long as possible. And again, more being morbidly obese, I've always been a confident person, but no, you're not. Why are you lying right now? Chantal, if you're so confident, why do you use the filters turned up to a hundred? I mean, like, like right here, you're still using the filters. People who are confident don't do this. They don't turn the filters up to a thousand and completely warp and distort their real appearance. Now that this this is just the opposite, Chantal. You do this when you are ashamed of what you look like. You don't want it, you're not being your real self. With you, it goes even further. You're not just about distorting your pictures and editing your pictures and photoshopping your pictures and filtering your live streams. No. You'll even filter your personality and put on a completely dis different personality depending on the guy that you're with. So if you're changing who you are as a person, as far as the way you act and the way you look for a guy, does that scream being confident with yourself? No, it screams, I am ashamed and I am embarrassed to the point where I will lie to my audience and I'll even lie to this supposed person that I love. Let me tell you something. If you love someone, if you really love them, you don't lie to them about anything. If you're around the right person, you should be able to be your real self and they are their real selves themselves with you and you can tell each other anything. But you're always hiding. You're always hiding behind filters. You're always running away from mirrors. And you get mad at anything that resembles a mirror, including the reaction channels. That's why you hate us. Because we are all mirrors. We are all, all of us, every single one of us, a mirror. Reflecting your bad behavior back at you. And not letting you forget how awful you are. And how awful you continue to act. And if you don't like what you see in the mirror, change the reflection, become a better person and stop fucking lying. How about that? But when it comes to health, that's a different matter, right? So <laughs> Chantal, how are you? Um, okay, hold on. <laughs> hold your questions. I got to answer one at a time. Okay. <laughs> how are you sleeping? I never sleep well away from home. Um, I am actually sleeping very comfortably. Uh, I do have my machine. So yeah, um, I'm sleeping very well. Let me see. Okay, um, Amber Lynn. Okay, I'm not going to, to address Amber Lynn's weight because it's not my business. She does put it online. So I guess all I can say is I know the struggle, you know, like. You haven't struggled with shit. You haven't even tried. You know, every, in the past, everybody's described what Chantal has done as cycles. I think that's an incorrect term for Chantal. I think it's more of a circle, not a cycle, a circle. Because a cycle in 
it implies that you do something and then everything completely changes and that becomes the part of the cycle. For a, a true cycle with Chantal, that would mean, you know, she's binge eating, binge eating, binge eating. And then there's like a period or so of say, let's just say one or two weeks where she's not. And then she goes back to the binge eating. Chantal has never been on a cycle. It's just been on a circle of I'm going to binge eat. I'm going to cater to the freaking feeders. Let me pretend for a few days to get away from that, but then go right back to it. It's a circle. It's a circle. That's her manipulating the audience. Like when people get mad at her, she'll do something to get people off her back and then go right back to her bad behavior. With weight and binge eating, um, so my if my advice, like how I stopped binge eating. What? See, th this is why I'm pissed. Why I stopped binge eating? What the hell is this? What's that? Excuse me? I stopped binge eating, she says. 15 fucking candy bars is not stopping. That is a binge. You don't buy 15 candy bars for anything other than a binge. Sorry. No. No. I'm not binge eating, she says. Really? Girl, if 15 candy bars is not a binge to you, I would like to know what is. Is to, like, I don't know. Because I still overeat sometimes, so I don't want to say, I, but actually, sometimes binge eating, I don't binge anymore. Like, actually, just sit and have binge sessions. So I guess I just kind of. Oh, oh, oh. So th this is her excusing her eating. Bec this is her doing the mental gymnastics, y'all. Because she's not sitting down with a whole table full of, of, say, cakes and cookies and whatnot. She doesn't consider that a binge. So in the past, Chantal, when I've seen your live streams and you're sitting there eating bags of chips, like one right after the other, followed by cake, followed by this, followed by that. That's not a binge. So are you trying to say that if you don't have the food all spread out in front of you and eating it all at once, that's not a binge? Bullshit. No, I've seen you binge. I've seen it. And I've watched you. And being on this side of the camera, there has been many moments where I wish that I could have walked up to you and taken that food away from you and told you to stop. You're still binging. And it doesn't matter if the binge is everything spread out around you all at once, or you're just going from one thing to the next thing and you're just doing the, the endless grazing. It's still a binge. It's still a binge. I know, just... Honestly, what sparked that was like when I started that intuitive eating thing. So I would suggest just reading the intuitive eating book, but. You know what? Fuck off with that intuitive eating. Seriously, fuck off with it. You're a binge eater. You don't know how to eat intuitively right now. How can you intuitively eat if you've got issues with food, maybe emotional, maybe mental, and you haven't worked those out? To the point that you're in Kuwait, you're around an attractive person who's supposed to be your husband, and you can't stop yourself from eating. If you're doing that around him, you're not even close to knowing how to eat intuitively. 15 candy bars? It doesn't sound like intuitive eating to me. Three plates of rice, Chantal, drinking a Pepsi that's basically the size of a two liter. You're not intuitively eating anything. Stop it. I don't know. That's that's what I would say. Um, when you get back home, do you plan on keeping edibles out of your life? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't want to go back to a self-destructive behavior at all. Uh, you mean go back to it? You never left. And undo all of the progress I've I've suffered through. <laughs> what progress? What progress? What what exactly have you accomplished in Kuwait? You put on a different personality. 
And no, you're not picking your nose and farting and, and acting gross. But that's only because Saul is there. And you know you can't act that way in Kuwait. But what's going to happen when you come back home to Canada? You're going to be yourself. Because that real Chantal that we all know, she wants to come out. Boy, does she want to come out. And she wants to rage badly. And she wants to binge badly. And like I said, I'm not wishing the binging upon you. I don't wish that upon anybody to have an ED. It's horrible. I don't wish any addiction on anyone. I'm just speaking facts, though. As someone who is an addict in recovery, looking at you, someone who's an addict not in recovery, you're not even close to being even halfway through a journey of recovery. You're going to go back and you're going to be surrounded by those temptations. And if you're not stopping yourself from the temptations in another country, when you go back home and they're going to be around you, you're not going to be able to say no. You're going to come home and you're going to have the mother of all binges. You're probably going to stop at the dispensary and grab, I don't know how much in edibles, and you are going to be zonked out of your head for three or four days. Mentally, it's not like suffering, but any, can we get an apartment tour? That would be a no. Have you seen people just make fun of like, I'm like, <laughs> And that was okay to you. The voice concern over this quick marriage and it's a fake mess of her. Chatterbox, I've addressed this ad nauseum, but. No, oh, that word, as ad nauseum. You're making me nauseated just talking about this crap. This whole marriage thing with Sala is, it's phony. It's fake. I don't know for what purpose it serves. Logic tells me that he's getting something major out of this deal to put up with you for two weeks, to have you there for two weeks. And so he's maintaining his composure and trying to be polite. He's not into you at all, but whatever it is, it must be major because he's keeping his mouth shut. But you guys aren't into each other. You're, you're just playing house with Sala. Oh, I'll be the mommy, you be the daddy. I, I'm, I'll play the wife, you play the husband. You're playing house temporarily for whatever reason. But knowing you, Chantal, you get attached to people that even look at you for five minutes. How are you going to deal when Sala is thousands of miles away from you and you don't know what he's doing, who he's talking to? You're going to flip the F out. Sala Nader was different, or not, I don't even want to say his name, but he was different because you guys saw what, you know, I would tell you, like, he was abusive. There's no reason. You know, I'm going to say this because it ties into the Sala thing. So Chantal, you said a little while ago that your family has expressed concern about your weight. Your friends have con expressed concern about your weight. Pretty much everybody in your life has expressed concern about your weight. And you want to be married and you want to be in a relationship. You're so desperate to have a man to claim you. I'm going to say this one more time. If you want to be in a relationship with someone, usually when somebody commits themselves to a relationship, whether there's a ring or not, they're looking for a partner that they can grow old with they can spend all of their days with, including their last day. And if you're someone, and if you have a myriad of health problems and you don't give a flying shit about your health, the person who's supposed to be your partner or you're thinking about wanting to be your partner, they're gonna look at that and say to themselves, do I wanna get emotionally invested and attached to someone that doesn't care about their health? that might pass away early or end up in the hospital? Do, do I want to get involved with someone that doesn't care about themselves to the point where their health is ragged already and we haven't even begun to get to know each other? If you want love so badly, if you really, really want it, 
it'd be a good idea to start caring about yourself. And you can start caring about yourself by stop lying to yourself and thinking you can binge on all kinds of food and, oh, I'm losing weight. That's bullshit. You're not losing weight. You're not. And trying to use somebody else as your control over food, not working. You can't do that. You can't look at other people to control your problem. You got to control it. You got to get it under wraps. Because that's something inside of you that nobody else can deal with. And if you keep encountering men that think, oh, I can control her eating problem by controlling her portions, wrong. It's not how you deal with an ED. It's not about the stomach. It's about the mind and it's about the heart. Those are internal things that need a lot of therapy. But unfortunately, you will never get it because you're too busy making money off your problem and catering to the freaking feeders. But stop all this nonsense. It's like acting like you've lost so much weight you can give advice to people. You can't give advice to anyone. Before you can help anyone first, you have to help yourself. And you're not willing to do that. So shut it with the advice to other people about their weight. Okay. So that's all I want to say about Foodie and her community posts and everything else. I just had to let it all go. I'm sick of this bitch. I'm sick of her. I'm sick of her getting on YouTube and monetizing her ED. You know, putting it to work and giving it a job and making money off of it versus getting it treated as she should. Tired of her being on YouTube and triggering people with EDs and then having the audacity to use the language of I'm in recovery, which is a mockery to anyone who's ever been through an addiction and they put in the work and they actually are in recovery. She's got many problems. She's got many addictions. She's not in recovery for a single one of them. And Chantal, filtering pictures and filtering videos does not count as recovery. It doesn't count. That's you wanting to continue your addictions and keep covering them up versus dealing with them. The more you try to hide, the worse you're going to get. Problems don't go away until you deal with them. Trying to sweep them under a rug doesn't make them go away. Trust me on this one. All right. That's it for this video. Again, sorry for any naughty language. I just had to let it all go today. Thank you all for watching and please have a good one. Bye-bye.